Here's a review of the shows I went to last. Here's a review of the shows I went to this year. This year, I went to eight shows, five of which were in the space of one month. I'm not gonna lie, what was the reason for that? Guys, come on. I know you're all in the group chat, sort it out. Not even in the space of one month, bro, actually. They were in the space of two weeks. Do you think this is a game? November was an expensive month for me, all right? Anyways, I thought it might be a nice idea to just detail some of my experiences at some of these shows, what was good, what I hated, what I disliked, what I liked, you know the vibes, blah blah blah. I go by ish, let's get weird. Alright, so the first one that I went to this year was JPEG Mafia at the O2 Forum Kentish Town. This was actually my first ever show that I went to. It was good, it was alright. It happened back in March. The opener was John Glacier. I'd never heard of her beforehand, but she was her music is good. I listened to her on Spotify and I John, be on the podcast, fam. But anyways, um <laughs> let me relax. She she's an experimental artist with more speechful based music than melodic stage presence was i would say one of the weaker points but you know i'd imagine if you're performing for your first ever time at a venue this big for one of your first ever times it makes sense the music was good i did have high expectations for the show based on ep2 and some of the clips that i'd seen of other shows online this guy stepped on bro his voice this guy sounded like he'd been gargling staples like five minutes before the show <laughs> It was crazy. I was a little bit disappointed because he didn't play a single song from EP2. Like, we couldn't have even gotten, like, I don't know, like, this one's for us or something like that. You guys already know how I feel about EP2 after last year's Albums of the Year video. It was a good album. I love that EP, not album. He did do a lot of the classics, things like 1532, St. Calvert, Bold, you know, Hazard Duty Pay. Hazard Duty Pay. The situation with his voice does make me wonder how ethical, not ethical, but how it, it is for these artists to just go on tour for the entire year, no break, pretty much the same set list, you know. Either way, he came on stage, he did his thing, he put his everything into this gig, he <laughs> slipped. It was funny, it happens sometimes. Why would you perform in dogs though? Peggy, come on man, that's, that's just irresponsible at that point. But what I do love about Peggy is how he puts his all into these gigs. He does everything he can to make the experience as positive as an, off of an experience for everyone as possible. Now my issue, right, is there's a certain demographic of kids out there who just think it's funny to mosh to everything. Bro, it makes sense, right? Because the thing is, I was stood outside in the queue and I was looking around at the ratio, right? Just as you do. And I was noticed, oh yeah, the ratio of guys to girls is actually not that bad. Then when they said, can the guys on the balcony queue on this side, the guys who are standing queue on this side, all the girls went to the balcony, bro. I was like, oh, what's, what's going on? I get inside, the show started, everything made sense. These guys were trying to muster free the frail, bro. Free the frail. Make it make sense. Big man Ting, you're scaring the two girls who were in the stand. <laughs> you're scaring the... <laughs> Get into the motion culture in the next few shows. I was scared in that pit. I fell over like two times and I thought I was about to die. I'm six foot one and I was heavy back then. I got tossed about in that pit like a rat. I've never been so disrespected in my life. This was a bunch of skinny white kids. I got tossed about like a wig, bro. Literally like a wig. You've seen the video. The dress sense of some of these fans as well. Come on, guys. What kind of person wears another artist's merch to a Peggy concert? I saw someone wearing Tyler the Creator merch. Also, these guys need to sh- I'm sorry. I got more criticisms about the fans than Peggy himself. Peggy killed it. John Glacier was good. The DJ was good as well. Just shower before you come to the gig. Come on. Next up, we've got Q. Miss Q? Just a letter Q. And Montel Fish in, in August slash it. I think it was August. At the Scala in London. This was a good show. The opener was Lani Rose. Um, I'll be real, I wasn't expecting that many to show up. No offense to the two of them. But then I realized, oh right, yeah, Montel Fish has been blowing up lately on everywhere. So it makes sense. I really do like Lani Rose. Lani, if you're watching this, be on the podcast. He has hip hop with elements of R&B in his sound. It might just be the other way around. He might have R&B with, with elements of hip hop. He merges the two nicely, that's all. Lani's crowd control. 
<laughs> was probably the bet hmm. it was definitely up there which was surprising to me because it's just an opener it was arguably the best out of all three his crowd control he was good montel he was low-key saved by the fact that he had bangers montel came on after lani he had passion which was good it did seem like people were more hyped for him than q because let me tell you when this song hotel came on when that song hotel came on guys I don't know if it's my for you page on TikTok, but I've never seen that song appear on there. As soon as he said this one's pretty big on TikTok and it's unreleased, it's called Hotel. As soon as I, I heard that, like five billion girls around me just ah! I'm like, what's going on? What, what is this song? As soon as the vocals started on this track, I swear to you, sound like a bunch of cats in heat or something getting dragged down the M4. I was I was rattled. Also, I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't expecting to be at the Montel Fish gig moshing. Fam, all these girls are smaller than me. I feel like. <laughs> It felt weird being on the other side of the spectrum, being one of the more powerful moshers in the room, you know what I mean? Anyways, Q came on afterwards. Q was something special. What he did on that stage was something special. That guy's talent. Talent. Not talented, he's talent. The band killed it. Drummer killed it. Killed it. He's one of those drummers that adds like all those little inflections and just additions to the riffs and everything and he just added to the show beautifully. I got to dap up Q at one point, um, what I would have done differently about this show, I would have had some merch there or something, like even some bandanas or hats or I don't know, Telfar bags, I, I, I don't know, just something, come on. I also would have chosen a venue with a higher stage as well and maybe some seats because we were all standing so that was an interesting change. Also, best believe, I got to meet the GOATs afterwards. They still haven't replied to my DMs, but that's okay. Their energy was nice. It was all good vibes. It was just a really nice atmosphere. Next up was 070 Shake. 070 Shake was special. Was special. Special show. The opener was decent. Um, It was 070 B Heard. If he gets some more experience, he could really kill it. He did kill it. Um, he came onto the stage with energy. And that's what you need in an environment like that because openers don't really get that much respect. He came on knowing what to do. Some of the bars that I did hear were good but they could have been delivered a little bit better they could have hit a bit hard santino the saint came on after i hadn't heard of him before the day though which is interesting he did have some bangers and he was really comfortable on stage which is really good to see It was clear performing wasn't unfamiliar to him, you know. The merch was alright. It, it was alright. I mean, look, let's be real. Look, let's 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 be real. Sixty pounds for a hoodie, and all it is is a handprint and just 070 shake in like, in like, a cool font. Like, like, come on. Like the Modus Vivendi merch was better. I wish I could have seen her when she came to the UK for that. But you know, it's it is what it is, and it's interesting because. What she lacked in the merch, she 
did amazingly on the album. I will say the hoodie wasn't worth 60. The vibes were good. It's just, you know, I like it when the crowd is getting hyped beforehand, you know. Praise the Lord came on. No one moved a muscle. Slow tie came on. No one moved a muscle. These guys were all just dead, fam. It was weird. Danny came on stage. She killed it. Her vibe was just beautiful. She was doing all of that speechful stuff like, guys, let's all give everyone a hug. I gave myself a hug and it was just, um, it was a nice moment, you know. This guy, Taj Keaton. Also, check out that interview, man. Come on, that, d do it. Anyways, he came out, he came into the mosque. She was like, Taj, get in that bitch. Yo. Taj, get the fuck in that bitch. He gonna be okay. This guy daddy was telling us to jump Taj fam. I was looking at him like bro, you're like eight feet tall. I'm not gonna win <laughs> and i'm not gonna lie i was low-key scared for bro because there's always that one person in the pit who takes things too serious when they push you you're getting pu it's like the incredibles <laughs> mr incredible chucks that guy with dwarfism through the um through the office next up we've got kid cuddy at the o2 arena this show had the weirdest vibes out of any show i've ever been to in my entire life Everyone there was... I was seeing people just generally looking pissed off, bro. Like, I don't know why. I was there for a good time. I was there to enjoy myself. It might have been something to do with being stood waiting around so long because that queue outside of the entrance was a myth. Something stupid. I got merch though. The merch, easily the best merch I've ever bought from any concert ever. I will say, Cuddy, come on, 50 pounds for... Anyways, um, it's a good quality shirt. I love the screen printing on it slash the printing in general on it. You can tell it's um, of a high quality. It's the most wearable, you know, like I could style it nicely with the outfit. And the thing is, even on Reddit, people were complaining after the show. Like some of the fans were, I will say, a little bit annoying. Like there was this one girl who kept getting on her man's shoulders. But come on, like it wasn't that bad. But I will say, what is up with people trying to get to the front of the crowd before the show's even started? All that's going to do is piss people off. If you're going to do that, mosh your way to the front. Don't just try to get to the front when everyone else is stood around waiting because that's just going to upset everyone. Have some decorum. Be slick about it. Call someone's name. Literally, that's how I got to my place after using the toilet or a JPEG meth for your I was just like, eh. And don't call out a generic ass name like Tom or Adam or something. Ishmael, Ishmael. That's how I got to my place back in the JPEG Mafia con. Call the name. People will just let you through. The opener was good. They had Nux. Nux brought out DC. <laughs> And loyal Kana. Nux was a good artist. His music style isn't that similar to Cuddy, so I don't know why he was there, but he it was still good. He was still a good um, opener, though. He did his thing. Energy was great. The visuals of the Kid Cuddy show were definitely the best out of any of the shows I went to this year. He had these weird, like, filters on him on the bigger screens. Cuddy brought out Chip the Ripper. He 
He bought out Ty Dollar Sign. It was a beautiful moment. Cuddy really did a good job there. Um, yeah, he came out looking like Iron Man, bro. I don't know what that was about. It's just some of the fans are just so weird, man. Weird vibes. This guy, Cuddy, fam, spent like 20 minutes just chatting to people, taking autographs, signing these nuts, fam. I swear, I was looking at him like, bro, the O2 Arena closes at 11. Come on, let's, 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 I'm, I'm trying to hear, <laughs> I'm trying to hear some bangers. Come on. Just for him to play Pursuit of Happiness. Not even the real Pursuit of Happiness, but the remix. <laughs> I really wanted to hear Pursuit of Happiness in Day and Night, like the original versions. I guess after however many years of playing those songs, it gets it gets to be a bit boring and you need to move on. The confetti at the end was nice. It was a nice touch, I will say that. Next up, we've got Lancey Fo. This guy Lancey knows how to put on a show. From the moment I stepped into the spot, scenes in there. People were mushing to songs that I've never even heard of in my life. Never even tasted in my life. Well, there was a moment where I genuinely thought I was gonna die in there. I fell over in a mosh, fam. Like five people fell on top. It was like a bun you know bundles, pylons? I don't know what you people call them back in primary school. Five people fell on top of me, bro. My durag got snatched off of my head. I've never been so disrespected in my life. I know I said that five minutes ago, but this time I truly, um, the Lancy gig was good. The merch was overpriced. Lancy, a hundred pounds for a hoodie is stupid. Don't ever expect me to spend that much on a hoodie. And don't call me broke either. I've, I've got, I've got self-respect, all right? That's not me being broke. But anyways, um, I'm not salty. Lan I mess with Lancy hard for real. That guy knows how to put on a show. <laughs> the opener was interesting. I don't know what happened with the visuals. <laughs> But, um, nah, it was a good show. People were mushing, the mushes were mushing, the water was watering. Bro, there needs to be a study put into how these East Asians dress. Because I swear to you, they're the most consistently best dressed demographic I've ever seen in my life. I swear, I was seeing shoes that I've never even seen before. I was looking at them like, how do you plan on moshing in those, bro? Like, what happens if someone steps on that? Like, these shoes were works of art. Nancy came on. Um, all right, we got, we got our on the phone. She just called me like literally right as I was recording. Our talk to me about the Lancy gig. Right, where do I start? It was crazy, let's just say that. I wasn't expecting it because a lot of people were saying, oh yeah, like the, the 17th isn't going to be that good. The 17th isn't going to be that good. Like it was going to be more lit on the 18th. So I already had that pre-assumption in my head that like when I get there, it's not going to be that good. But I was completely like blown out the park. Like, because I saw on Twitter, a lot of people were saying, yeah, like I'm selling my ticket, I'm selling my ticket. But it was actually really lit. The mosh pit, that, that, was, <laughs> that was something else. It was a good vibe. And like, I feel like everybody that was there generally like had an interest for Lancy and like the underground music scene, especially like, the, like the songs that the DJ was playing before, like the Yee and all these type of things. It was also nice to see a lot of people dressed like in their like cool little fits. Like, cause usually when you see people dressed like that, it's like the odd one too, like if you're walking around Central, but it was nice to see a community of people that actually had drip, that were wearing archive fashion. It was really nice to see like a group of people that listen to underground music, are interested in archive fashion. And it was real, like, I'm doing, like, Did you just say archive fashion? Archive. Yeah. Our, it's archive. <laughs> nah, that's staying in there, fam. That's staying. I haven't slept much. That's why I said that, okay? I'm not a dumbass, okay? And everyone was very, like, friendly as well. So, like, I was just there, I was talking to people, meeting up with people that I never even knew before. And even the artists that came on before that performed, and no one had even heard of them. They brought energy, they brought vibes. They actually had the crowd ready to like, 
see Lancey. It was insane, like. I was recording that shit and I was like, I'm gonna look for these artists when I get home because their music was insane. Yeah, nah, they killed it for real. Once he played the role the entire show, he played this role of like some kind of demon goblin kind of creature wearing this diesel fit. It was crazy. Denim shirt, denim trousers as well. Ah, oh, beautiful. It did end relatively abrupt. We were all screaming, one more song, one more song. Uncle at the front was like, nah, the show's over. Time to go home. Wait, what do you mean? Uncle, please. Uncle. <laughs> what? He's good. He's actually good. That's crazy. DJ played Family Ties before the show started. Everyone lost their mind. I lost my mind as well because honestly, after seeing those TikToks, those TikToks where people were like, I don't care if I'm at a funeral, I don't care if I'm at this, that, if this song plays, I'm going bananas, I'm going gorillas, like it's niggas in Paris, you know the vibes. Next show I went to was Pierre Bourne. Pierre Bourne was, um, like the vibes were good in there. I met some cool people in the queue to get in. DJ played Family Ties. People went dumb. It was at this point where I was like, these DJs, fam. Is, is, is Family Ties a cheat code or something? Did these DJs see the TikToks and they were like, hey, I might need to implement this in my, uh, in my, in my, in my playlist. They just play it and expect everyone to go dumb, which we did. Okay. To be fair, I was on like the front of the mosh. I was like, open it up, open it up. As soon as the drop hit, I was just like, nah, I'm, I, I, I dipped. <laughs> I don't have energy for this. The openers did their job. Shark. Jelly. And this other guy, I can't remember his name. Did their job. They hyped us as if Pierre was about to come on. This guy with locks, friggin', he looked like he was from Florida. Let that be enough. This guy said, if you win gang, shout gang. Bro, like 50 people in the crowd shouted gang. I was looking around, I do not feel safe right now. I was rattled. But anyways, um, Pierre played the classics. He played a lot of the classics. He played Drunk and Nasty, Poof. He played all of the good ones. I wanted him to play Ballad. I literally typed it on my phone. That was my stomach. Held it on my head, Ballad. This guy just looked at me and just kind of rolled his eyes. This guy Pierre is so awkward, fam. Obviously, he's well within his right to not play it. The set list wasn't necessarily to my taste. Like, there were some of the classics, but it was a lot of songs that I didn't really know, which is weird because I actually really like Pierre as well. Like, I'm not a diehard fan, but, you know. And he didn't even play Hop in My Bed. Like, he played barely anything from Good Movie. He played some Carti. There was a point where he, like, kind of, like, paused in the middle of the show to just DJ and play some tracks. His attitude when he came onto stage, he's just very clock in, clock out, just there to do the job and leave. He didn't really interact with the crowd that much. Someone threw a, <laughs> someone threw a hoodie on stage. I'll just run the clip, cause.
I will say, people have got to stop this thing where they chuck their phones on stage and expect the artist to like be in their be real or something. You're not a main character. The merch at this show was actually good. I didn't buy any. In hindsight, I could have shelled out £35 for a t-shirt. That wasn't even that bad. £35 for a beanie is extensive, but t-shirt, that's not that bad. I should have got something in hindsight. The next show I went to was The Platinous Experience, Bib Summer, Peckham Audio. This show, um, it wasn't even really in like a venue, it was more of like a club kind of scene. It was a relatively small venue, which was nice. It was nice, it felt very intimate, you know? Especially considering this guy Bib, on numerous occasions, just jumped into the crowd and was moshing with us, bro. He killed it. Alright, so DJ, relatively good. Again, with the family ties, bro, come on. Enough, enough is enough. There was like a party starter kind of guy who came on stage at one point and he was trying to draw people out. He was like, you with the prosthetic leg, what are you doing up there? Come, come down. Guy with the prosthetic legs like, hey bro, look at my leg fam. Do I look like I need to be in a dance floor right now? That didn't actually happen, I just made it up. But you get the, I will say, the bar situation there, this wasn't on Bib at all. This was on Peckham Audio. That was my stomach again. Um, how can I go over to you, ask for some water, and you're like, oh, yeah, there's some water um, just there. I look to the side, it's a jug of water, an open top jug of water with some plastic cups next to it. Not even a top on this jug. Someone could have slipped whatever into that jug and just walked away while your backs were turned, guys. What are you playing at? I look at this jug, I look at the woman, I look at the jug, she's looking at me. And I pour myself a cup and walk away. Fam, I ditched that cup the mi as soon as I could. I didn't take a single sip. I was in that most dehydrated, yo. The Ren's Nero. No, what are you talking about? What are you, what are you talking about? If you want to be an actor, you better get out of my face. Evil way. I'm big, big, short, back. I'm dangerous. Oh, and this other guy as well. I got the PCs, I got the rap, you know. Um, I didn't catch his name. It's interesting hearing a northern accent rapping, you know, like I can tell that he's gonna go far. It was good. Bib came on stage. It was weird because just when I was thinking like, man, why didn't this gig have any merch? Bib should have bought out some merch. They start chucking out hats into the crowd, yo. They start chucking out hats. Let me repeat, they start chucking out merch into the crowd, just like, eh. And best believe a real nigga caught one, fam. That's why I caught a hat. There aren't that many outfits that I can style it with, because, like, literally, look, there's a bunch of colors on it. But it's, it's nice, you know. That's why I'm going to do the rest of the review with this on my head. This isn't even merch. This is, like, unreleased from some brand, from what I heard. Bib brought out Kemi for Interstellar. <laughs> Killed it on stage. Kemi then did I don't sell drugs anymore. Killed it. Man said, might as well take my pinky out and stick it. Bib is just, he knows how to perform. He did all the bangers. I really wanted to see Oh So Cold, but apparently time was not of the essence, basically. He got, he ran out of time, basically, which sucks, but you know, next time, next time. Next one that I saw this year, the last one was BK The Ruler at XOYO Shoreditch. This show was good, the vibes were interesting. It was like in a club, interestingly enough. It was good, I met some cool people. The, the opener was good, it was Moa Lola. She was good, the DJ was one of the worst DJs I've ever experienced in my life. I'm sorry. How was bro trying to make us mosh to F love?
Also, that place, that space was not small enough to mosh. It was an embarrassment, to say the least, the way these people were moshing. I did hop in a couple of times, but I was like, bro, this venue is not small enough or there aren't enough people here to mosh. The merch was great. I got a bandana, a BK the Ruler bandana, um, with the BK the Ruler signature in the bottom corner. And it was only $5, which is actually really affordable. Uh, I couldn't say no to that because the JPEG Mafia one, which was, you know, the design wasn't as nice. It was a creative design on the Peggy one. But the BK the Ruler one just, it's easier to style, you know what I mean? Moa Lola had some bangers, I'm not gonna lie. Like, the DJ was playing some pretty questionable tracks, but Moa Lola came on, I was like, ooh, okay, this is different, this is different. I messed with this. She had some bangers. Her vibes were a little bit weird when I met her outside, but, you know, it happens sometimes. BK the Ruler, her energy, 10-10, bro. Um, she played all the bangers. I did want to hear Depressing, which was the second half of OK OK. It was just a really nice place to be. The moshing is an issue. Guys, stop it. How are you moshing to Summer? Summer's a sad song. You're, sc you're scaling the holes, fam. Anyways, because there's a certain demographic that I'm tired of being stood behind at some of these. You guys can put the pieces together by the way I described them. Greasy ass hair. Just shaking. Just shaking, fam. I'm stood behind them. I can't even sing the lyrics to some of my favorite songs because if I open my mouth, I'm finna get sweat down the back of my throat. And now I got COVID-39. Also, I swear I saw Pink Pantheress in there and I'm actually upset that I didn't go and speak to her. BK the Ruler's crowd interaction, her crowd control was beautiful. She just knows how to interact with people, you know, she was doing B-reels and all of that and she didn't waste time like Cuddy. BK the Ruler comes off as a down-to-earth person, which is nice. She's just really personable. I saw a guy who actually bought the meet and greet ticket. Look, I don't care if it's Beyonce, bro. I'm not paying 60 pounds to say hi and bye to, to someone for 20 seconds and get a cute picture, you know what I mean? My Viz isn't that good. We've already established the fact that I'm a fan by the fact that I paid 60 pounds to meet you. So the dynamic's just not gonna be there. But anyways, that's besides the point. That basically sums up every show that I went to this year. This is a place where I close the video off. Guys, I'm, I'm telling you, make sure you like and subscribe. Fam, I'm tired of it. You know the vibes. Keep it real. This is the part where I run the credits. See you later, alligators.